Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jen Archer, and we are broadcasting live. I am from Denver, Colorado. And today, I would love everyone's um, attention to my school, our school. I'll go ahead and say our school that um, we started in Nicaragua on Ometepe Island in 2013. Essential Language and Art School, ALAS. ALAS means wings in Spanish. And Essential is a name that I chose for my dance company back in 2007. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about the name in a little bit. <clears throat> So in December 2013, Alas was born in a lakeside cafe after I was asked by one of the owners of the cafe if I could teach English. And I said, well, you know, uh, I'm a teacher. He said, oh, what kind of teacher are you? And I said, I'm a dance teacher. And he said, bah. and he said, well, I have a school here. And um, we have kindergartners and we're always looking for teachers. And I said, I'll see you on Tuesday. So I showed up that Tuesday and my 11 students, uh, I still know all of their names because they're still students in our program um, in 2019. Um, we together created a class uh, based mostly on what the American standard would be. I'll just say American standard now. Um, for like a pre-ballet or a pre-dance pre class. And so we taught body, I taught body parts and numbers and, and um, the alphabet. And it was an amazing, it was one class, one day. In 2014, we came back the next year uh, to house it in exchange for some property up on the island and we were there five months. There was a drought. We were living about a half a mile up the volcano, uh, washing clothes um, on a washboard, uh, conserving water, only using 25 gallons of water a day for me, my husband, and our son. So we're Americans living off grid for the first time, just sort of thrown into it. That year, uh, we expanded into another site. We had the same 11, 11 returning students, 99 REACH. So what I've, what I've done is I've taken this term, REACH, and what that means is each class, so in the 36 free classes, how many individual students were in each class? And they're not unique. There, there's actually a difference between unique students, new students, returning students, but there were 352 attendance records um, that year. So if you all can see this map, that school, um, the bilingual school, this is a map that they contracted someone to draw um, or make for them, I guess it was in 2010, I think is what Alvaro said. But if you look, um, just to the right of where it says Hacienda Merida, Ometepe Nicaragua, it says Merida. That's the village that we live in. That's where the Burners Without Borders uh, grants are going, right into this village. It's the first one anyway um, that we got in 2017. So Merida is where this school is. Hacienda Merida is the hotel that built this preschool back then. Um, Basically, the owner wanted his daughter to have a better education, and so he invited all of her friends from the community and hired teachers. So it just kind of started like that, and he funded the first two years from the income from the hostel and hotel. So <clears throat> Alta Gracia, if you look on Concepcion, now Concepcion is an active volcano, and um, Madeiras is not active. You'll see a lake at the top. So we get our, our water from the lake. Concepcion is active. If you look where the ferries are, you see where the ferry boats are. You see the pictures of them. One uh, several of the ferries go into Moyo Galpa. The rest go into San Jose. That's the only way to get to this island. It's in the middle of Lake Nicaragua. Any supplies, food that's not grown there, um, 
phones. I mean, this community, this volcano never even had fax machines. It basically, they went from black and white TVs to iPhones, um, which is kind of a, a, an interesting thing that I'm dealing with in terms of uh, electronic evolution or social evolution. And those are other topics that we can talk about at another time. But this map anyway, kind of gives you an idea of, of what, we're, what we're doing here. Um, okay, 2015, uh, we decided that we were going to codify the syllabus because now we're sort of running around the the volcano, um, you know, on the bus. There's only one bus at le at this time. There was only one bus that left our community every day, and people would see me on Concepcion and say, "When are you going to start classes?" Now, I also live halfway up a volcano, so I have to wash clothes. I don't really have any water. I only have one pair of shoes, and we were very poor um, that first year. So anyway, in our, uh, let's just say our third tour, uh, we had 12 kinders. Now we have three levels of classes at this school. Um, and this is all word of mouth. This is all word of mouth. This is parents wanting their children to have this type of programming. There are no art classes. There are no dance classes. There's no yoga for kids. There's no martial arts. There's nobody teaching them how to play soccer. If, if anybody has baseball equipment, it's because somebody stole it on the mainland and smuggled it over on the ferry. No one can afford any of this back, back then. So now the school, this bilingual school, has grades uh, kindergarten first and second. We still now have retained all of our founding students in the third year. Now I'm traveling back and forth to the United States in the middle of all of this. We were at, uh, there nine weeks at one site, two times a week. So we're inside this private, I guess you would call it a private school. But Alvaro was letting me teach on Tuesday nights and Thursday nights after those three classes. He was letting me teach open community classes. One of the issues, and this is something that you might run into, um, or, or some of the burners might run into, is that, um, you know, making sure these, these, these properties are private, they're people's homes. And if there's issues with other families in the community, if somebody has stolen something or made someone mad, those students aren't going to be able to come. So it's, it's public, but it's not public. This has been a huge challenge all over the island um, in, some of the, in, in some of these sites where there's families that just just aren't aren't permitted uh, now with it with the political unrest also being very careful which families um, and people are allowed on the properties so that's a challenge we didn't talk about that the other day Molly um, when we were on the phone but okay so in 2015 534 attendance records our son Jay Lynn who uh, travels with us obviously um, he was homeschooled uh, when he's over there. So we, we, part of his homeschooling was that he was, became our assistant teacher. So Jalen was technically our first volunteer outside of me. In the corner there for this 2015, this video, do you all want to take a look at it or do you want to watch it later? We're going to share the slide deck out. Um, okay. So we can watch it afterwards. So this is adorable. So these are the second graders that I had had since they were in kindergarten. You'll hear them speaking their English. I speak to them in both English and Spanish, but I have to go to their class to pick them up like you would at, at a normal school. You know, the, the teachers that are coming, the adjunct arts teachers would come and they'll pick up the kids and bring them to class. But we walk across in front of the lake on the beach. 2016. We got our first grant from Burners Without Borders, and I get emotional every time. We could not believe it. We, I cried. Um, I cry every time I get y'all's email. I cry even just getting your emails. I'm so grateful. We were there 50 days, five sites. We had 39 returning students, 238 unique 204 we were uh, showed up to each of the classes 707 attendance records 96 classes and we brought teachers from Colorado that year so these were my friends Chris Mees um, I had some notes that I'm not able to see 
because I'm kind of new to this um, interface, but um, Alyssa Graves from Vamos Arte in Golden. She's a professional art teacher. Uh, Chris Mies came and taught martial arts. Uh, Kelsey Kiernan is our early childhood director. She came and taught dance. Jennifer Puig from Miami came. Um, and then Mercedes Rodriguez, she was actually living on the island at the time and was teaching yoga and we recruited her from the community. Um, I know I'm gonna be running out of time here soon, so I'm just gonna kind of zip through the rest of these. Oh, there's my little animation. So those wings, there, Alyssa, we painted for an event. Our friend had a communion and we were giving classes in this site in Alta Gracia. And my idea was that each of the attendants at the party would each paint a feather. And that mural is still on their wall today. Um, that's Kenneth up there with one of his first um, farm animal uh, drawings. He had a private lesson with Profe Alyssa. And then this is Rancho Chilos, one of our sites here, um, that we actually have a tile floor. This was the first site that we actually had a professional floor. In. So uh, these are just gorgeous photos. It's, it's really not typical that you have a beautiful studio space like this. There are no professional spaces there yet, and that's what we're in the process of building. 2017, we were awarded um, 1,000 for Burners Without Borders. Uh, there's an article there, Best of Colorado. They did a spot on us um, for the programming there. We broke ground on the teacher's housing, thank, thankfully, thanks to this grant. And we were recruited by Denver YMCA Gar and Garden Place Academy and Ashley Elementary to teach, they heard about this programming that we were doing in Nicaragua and recruited us in the United States to do the same bilingual programming here in the United States. I'm gonna cry. So that was a pretty big deal. We didn't solicit any of that. They, they called us and said, we've heard about your programming and we really want this in our schools. So we were really grateful to have that opportunity. And our baby Ryo was born that year. Um, you'll see the baby horse and our son there. Ryo is now two years old. Um, he is one of the biggest horses on the island, so he's already working and giving rides. He's very, very chill, so he provides transportation and work for the school, and Agape also provides transportation and work. She's kind of sassy, so she kind of does that on her own time. They are being cared for by some professionals while we are not there. Our friend Dariel is in the corner there. The basketball that he has is one that was donated. Um, this story, this next story, the reason I'm rushing, is um, I was sitting inside the, the little school where he's sitting and I saw a white rental car sort of drive by and this is when Fuego de, Agu de Agua was on the island and the runners were there and everybody's working out and drinking their green juices on the island and I saw this rental car go by and I thought, oh, you know, there's some tourists, but I finished doing what I was doing and this man came to the door and he had a soccer ball deflated, a basketball, uh, two little pads and a pack of pencils and a roll of stickers. And he said, are you the teacher? And I explained why I was there and he gave me these things and I, I cried. And then he said, come out to the car, I have more. And he opens the back of the car and every year this family brings school supplies. That morning, I was praying for a way to have money for school supplies. I didn't have crayons. Someone had stolen like all the glue that I had bought. Um, anyway, he, I went to the car and he gave me a few more school supplies and I was so grateful and I walked away and I went to teach a private lesson about a half a mile away. And an hour later, the children said, I could hear the children, profe, profe, there's a man here looking for you. Come on, there's a man. And I came around the corner and it was this Poti family. And he said, where's your bag, Jen? Where's your rainbow bag? And I brought it out. He said, empty it. And he, they stuffed my bag full of over $500 worth of school supplies, pencils, stickers, paints, 
I don't even know. I couldn't even believe it. But um, I wanted to talk about the Poti family a little bit, but what an amazing time. I still have all of that, that stuff. Um, we're still using a lot of that. 2018, we again received an award from Burners Without Borders. It immediately went down to secure, we, on the property that we have for the teacher housing, uh, the old owners were digging a well and they don't want the well there. So they said, since the well is next to your property, why don't you go ahead and use it as a septic tank? Which would have cost us, you know, two, three thousand dollars to dig. Basically, had a, don a septic tank donated last year. I don't even know what a because you have to have that first. Um, and uh, we, in four communities last year, um, I'm sorry, in 2018, six sites, seven weeks. We, I, I by myself did dance and art in English. Almost 500 attendance records, 202 students. 104 new students, 49 free classes. Three days after, four days after we left the island, the civil unrest started in April, on April 18th, um, as a result of decisions that were made about social security. It has just sort of snowballed into all kinds of other drama over the past year. Um, Ruben Dadio, um, so there, there's some notes there that I wanted to you all to kind of look through. We, my school that started at the Denver schools blew up and we were asked to do even more programming in all of these schools um, here in Denver. It's very, very exciting. And then we were asked for the very first time to, the picture is a little bit blurry, but we were finally asked to bring programming into the elementary schools, the public schools on the island, which is a huge, huge deal. Then I was offered a job at a Charter School Teacher Network um, because they had also heard about me. So I was contacted to be a substitute teacher here in Denver. So the word of mouth sort of trend that happens in Ometepe started happening here in the United States. And we're super, super grateful for that because we don't have a lot of time to go out sort of soliciting work or um, marketing any of this programming. 2019, we just got back. I wrote to uh, Molly and Chris when I got back. Um, I kind of always keep in touch with you guys, letting you know what's going on down there. Um, it wasn't very bad. When we got down there, we were offered um, an opportunity uh, for Burners Without Borders to do an impact report on us. We were able, I was, I did witness um, several sort of intimate emotional occurrences having to do with U.S. deportation, civil unrest. I want to talk about how that, even though we're having fun and we're teaching and we're getting our name out there and we're doing what we think is so great in the world there are days that are just really 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 intense when you get wrapped up in the communities like this i am not allowed at all to speak about politics i'm not allowed to have an opinion i'm not allowed to march i'm not allowed to take sides they i will not be able to come back and then i'll be in the middle of families i'll be in the middle of teachers that is a huge, huge deal um, that, you know, I, I know we're running out of time. We applied for our Burners Without Borders 2019 grant this year. My NGO, our NGO application was stifled because of the a civil unrest, which was the point that I wanted to make. They are not holding any, they're not giving out any applications until all of this goes away, especially to foreigners, Americans are not getting NGO applications approved until this is all over. We have tons and tons of books and supplies being donated right now. We do not have the funding to be shipping any of it over there yet. And Inicelia and Orion, um, who are prominent figures in Alta Gracia, started, wanted me to help them start a private school because Inicelia retired and never saw any of her retirement money. The photos here, the photo at the top, um, is me with some of our students from El Congo. These students have been with us for um, five years. Uh, the 
the painting in the background, Alyssa made at Hotel Monkeys Island. She painted, one of our teachers donated this mural to that family. Nicole there is on the right. This is her clay project that she did with my son, Jalen. On the far bottom right, that is my son, Jalen, with our very sweet um, Art 1-2 class and the the man standing next to my son, who my son has a UM hat, is Kenji Nakajawa. He rode his bike from Los Angeles all the way down to Nicaragua planting seeds. His dream is to feed the world for free. So our students have started collaborating with him painting garden markers and essential arts donated all of the paint brushes and all of our art supplies because we're not using them while we're not there so all of what you have given us burners without borders that we've bought this year for our art students we gave to him and he started a program on the other side of the island and if you go back and look at your map that's in balue so he has over 40 students coming every saturday to plant seeds eat eat the fruit and vegetables from the seeds and paint and, and speak in English, which is a fun thing. The middle photo there is our students in line at Galaxia, our new site that was a new site in 2018, ready to go across the floor in their fancy yoga pants and their dance um, attire. That's, a, that's as good as it gets, that's as good as uniform as we get. And then over in the far uh, left, those are the paints that we had donated this year from my good friend Benison, uh, Davison Benson, who is a drummer in California. And um, this is how the classes are set up when the kids come in. And I have two more quick slides. Um, we, there's a, a link there to, for our Facebook uh, page that is updated pretty regularly. Septic Tank getting that uh, done this year. We want to build theater and recording studios for the kids. Um, my son is an expert. Um, uh, he's, he's, he's a digital artist, music artist. Water and utilities is a big deal. We do have a lot of problems with electricity and water on the island. Sorry, I didn't get to talk about that. Materials and supplies always needed from buildings to art. Volunteer recruitment is something we're gonna need support with this year um, because we have to go through a pretty specialized process um, in order to make sure that we have the right fit for teachers um, and people who are helping us down there. We're doing our best to sort of recruit from our own community in the United States and also in, in Nicaragua. Um, and then takeaways, Molly wanted me to talk about this. When in Rome, just smile and wave, do as the Romans do, do as the Nicaraguans do, listen more than you talk. Um, I did have some strong opinions about some things in the beginning. It didn't really get me anywhere. It's just better to zip it and just sort of see which direction that goes. Political fences, don't climb them. Just stay sort of away and out of that. Um, needs versus wants, really determining what are your own personal needs, uh, the needs of your students, the needs of the communities that you're serving, and then community collaboration. Uh, really asking the community what they need um, or what they want. What are their needs and their wants versus what what it is that I feel like I should be bringing or they should be learning. I don't, I don't want to give people what I think they need. I want them to have what they feel they need. And, um, and I sort of curate those experiences. Thank you for listening. What, what I really love about your story is that um, it demonstrates what you can do when you plant a seed and then you take care of it and how things can grow with just a little injection of support. I just wanted to say right there, uh, I'm interested as a question for you, as far as like introducing arts program, we had folks that were doing it in Puerto Rico there. Um, that tie into the charter school network, like did people just hear about ahead of time in the public school system about the work you were doing and just kind of hearing about it from like after school stuff? Yeah, I have a lot of teacher friends um, in in and around Denver and kind of all over the world. <laughs> and uh, so, um, you know, almost everything I've ever done has been word of mouth. And uh, they just got word of it. And I was asked to do an interview. 
Nice. And then they hired me on the spot, apparently for, for charter school teacher network, they never hire anyone out of their interview. Um, so this was like a thing. And then there were some phone calls made and where I live out here by the airport, there's seven schools mm -hmm. and you can go through when you're hired in, 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 for the charter school teacher network, you can go through and just say, I only want to go to these schools so I can walk and there's jobs every single day mm -hmm. and it's a set amount. And now I actually wanted to mention to you, Nick, that I'm in charge of helping all a lot of the immigrant students. Um, and, um, and I just call them expats, like I'm called in Nicaragua, the students that are just moving here mm -hmm. and helping them get set up with, you know, programming, dance classes, theater classes, uh, sports, you know, connecting them around the communities, but I'm also being hired to sort of manage the, the middle school's um, files and, you know, they just need one person to come in twice a week that can just help archive and manage. I'm a very organized person. I know how, like all the things you're talking about, I can come and sort jeans for you yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and bleach and, and soaps and, and all of those things and mm -hmm. fold blankets and wash blankets. And, but that's kind of what I'm hired to do around here is be, provide support to the schools. In addition to teaching, they do, they have plenty of teachers, but they don't have anybody who's going to come and find all of the cords that go to the walkie talkies. Yep. So that's been an interesting thing. And being bilingual has been super helpful. Um, now I'm bilingual. I'm an, a native English speaker and I'm bilingual now. And so I've been, that was another thing I forgot to mention in my, in my, my uh, speech was that, or in, in my presentation was how many doors have opened for me now that I am bilingual. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm super inspired because we saw some very similar kind of like tie-ins as the schools and groups started to kind of come together um, because they saw the value of what was being done and how important it was. And, you know, um, there's no reason why this has to be a suffering game. It's awesome, actually, and much better when you've got the art and you've got the creativity uh, involved in it there. And, and I agree. Do, yeah. And marketing is expensive. And, and I mean, it just seems ridiculous when we're just trying to help people. I don't mm -hmm. just... Yeah if people need a teacher, they just, or if I see that somebody needs support, then I'll go and let them know that mm -hmm. I'm available. Mm -hmm. All the time. Yeah, all the time. I know the marketing thing gets really like out of hand or it feels like it has to be marketed, but having concerted media messages, you know, we had some pretty strict stuff come up where it's like we couldn't, photographing what was happening around us was not a part of the situation but for like security reasons. And then also just like, you know, people can sometimes take it as like, Oh, you're going to sell helping people, you know, like, eh. but right. you know, kind of keeping everything actually pretty muted was very, very useful and just kind of letting the work speak for itself. And exactly. You know, yeah, it's really good. Not, I would just pose a question to the group. And if anyone wants to unmute and ask the question, uh, do that too. But I, you know, I'm curious. So we've been trying to figure out what these BWB worldwide calls are about. Um, and so this is the second one we've done. And, you know, Molly and I were talking about, you know, what, what we're doing different projects across the network that, that might be able to come in and, and tell us what they're up to and, and, and share their learnings. Um, and, you know, you can do it now, you can do it later. We'd love to know if this is, if this is the useful thing to, to do with, with this time. I think the other one, we tried to have kind of a community conversation amongst people on, on Zoom, and that was a little bit messy. Um, and so, I don't know, I just, we also want to just make sure that you all know this is your time in a way. And I think that the most important thing from Molly and I's perspective is that um, the stories of, of what people are doing are getting out there to the network and that we're allowing more people to meet e each other um, so that that person-to-person -person -person connection can just happen. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm always going to probably ask that question is, is, are we doing it? I, I don't know what I would have done without you guys the last three years. I'm so grateful. One of the, the ways that I need support is I need more teachers down there all the time because I do have a home in Denver. I have a cat. 
um, you know, I have family, so I can't leave all year, every year, and we have to come back and make money. I don't have income when I'm down there. Um, I could be teaching online English classes, but I'm teaching, you know, I did all the numbers today for how many classes, uh, I, I didn't give you guys the 2019 numbers, but I mean, I'm super overwhelmed when I'm down there by myself. I think I taught 81 classes and six privates and something like eight or nine weeks by myself walking around um, and, and getting on a bus. I have no car, you know, we don't even have a floor in our house there, no running water, you know. And so having some more support where I can be there and, and be sort of supervising the building, but then having maybe some younger students um, or interns or volunteers going to the sites and actually teaching the kids um, would help me a lot. And having people, having volunteers there year round um, or making enough money that we're able to pay teachers to be there. Um, that's kind of the support that I'm looking for in the future. I just want the school to grow. All of us, even even the parents and students down there, just want it to grow. They don't want me to leave. They're already they're trying to get me to do video classes now, and none of them have tablets. So they're all sitting. There's like 12 kids sitting around a laptop that some tourist left on a bus. <laughs> so they're just, Professor, we have a computer. How'd you get it? We don't want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, maybe getting some iPads down there for the, not iPads, but little tablets for the kids, things like that would help me, um, you know, just kind of getting more attention for what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that we could spend hours talking about the conversation of how to enroll more volunteers and like turn, turn it into your own thing. And that's definitely a conversation we'd love to have with you. Yeah. For me, these conversations like on a monthly basis, kind of going back to the whole like believing in that network of care and support has done wonders for being able to kind of keep the strength up and not ever have to feel too alone in any of the work that comes in day in, day out. Um, being able to see all the different comments that come up when the videos get posted and, you know, just know then that actually, you know, none of us are alone with what we're having to do. Um, it's something that um, has been invaluable on the morale and you know avoiding burnout kind of side of stuff there and you know literally just being able to hear that other people are working on amazing projects that they're really passionate about and are doing really good communal work is something then that I you know um, in face of everything that's kind of hopeless and dejecting about our times right now um, it gives me a lot of strength and always has so these conversations have been ace keep it up keep doing it there's hard days though. There's some days where I'm like, ooh, that first Mama's year is like when, this. when there's no butter in the community. Mm. Oh my <laughs> God. No, that was serious the first year. I got used okay. to it. But you know, there's days when there's no eggs or there's no beans and I can't afford to, I'm not eating steak on an island in the middle of Nicaragua. I'm not doing that. I'm not eating red meat. I barely eat any chicken, you know, so we're kind of, we're mostly vegetarian when we're down there, but there's, there's hard days, you know, and there's so many mosquitoes and you don't want to, you, you know, you have horses and you have animals and plants and you don't want to spray anything. Um, there's no screens, there's no fans, there's no electricity to run the fan. And Molly and I were talking the other day for anybody who comes down and volunteers for us, you know, I'll just say, oh, you're going to be teaching art classes and dance classes. Doesn't that sound fun? Yeah. And then it rains for 10, the, the, you know, the, the 20 weeks that the kids are there, you know, and then there, there's no electricity or, you know, the toilets aren't flushing or whatever's happening, you know, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, your, your catchphrase, calm is fast, mm -hmm. really blew my mind. Blew I wrote my it mind. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you. That's very sweet to say. I appreciate you all immensely. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Is that you? No, no. I don't know where that one comes from. It's like one of those, like, just sayings that came at one point and 
That's some Burning Man jive right there. Jen Fagan Archer on Facebook. I'm a founding member of Facebook because when it was launched in the UK, I was living in Bermuda and had no other way to keep in touch with my friends and family. So I have a pretty intense algorithm there. I'm not on any other, I'm not really on Instagram or Twitter. I have those accounts linked to Facebook. But it's Jen F-A-G-A-N Archer and Essential Arts, A-S-C-E-N. T-I-A-L Arts. The name of my band is Babywood Hatbox. If you Google Babywood Hatbox or Essential Arts, you will get pages and pages of all the things that we do. Um, so I am a professional artist and a teacher. It'll say Essential Language and Art School, A-S-C-E-N. T-I-A-L Language and Art School, ALAS. And our number is 720-515- three seven 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 and that is whatsapp and google so it's a forever number Thank you.